Is that he lost all custody of seeing his daughter? I think in Mr. Lalit's case, after speaking to him, I think he was misinformed as in to his chances or the opportunity of gaining custody. I think he was not informed correctly. He said when he went to the court, they told him that the only way he could bring a matter for access up to the court is if the mother brought him up before the court for maintenance and custody, that he wasn't given the up, that he would not be able to start a matter without her, without her bringing him up first. So I think his, in his issue, he was misinformed for whatever reason. Um, employees of the court will say that will never happen, but I have heard certain things of this nature happen. I have heard sometimes, I suppose someone who's on, on a new desk, so maybe it's a OJT, somebody who doesn't have the information and given information that they don't have the information for, or they're not legally trained to give. And he said, based on that information, um, he was told that he have to wait for her to bring, bring him up, so to speak. And he didn't act on that. But I could tell you, sometimes what you go through, because he also gave an, an instance of him going to the house even before trying to go to court. And then because, I mean, even though there was no court order and, and he, it would mean that he has just as much rights to the child as she does, he didn't know that one. But going to her premises, I mean, you can't go on anybody's premises and demand anything. So she would call the police on him and they would remove him off the premises. So the other source of advice he got also is from the police. The police telling him that at the end of the day, he well, he doesn't have rights to the child unless he goes to court, which is another, for, which is also false information. At that point in time, the only thing that would bar him or limit is, is his parental right or parental access to the child more than anything else legally was a court order. And there was no court order at that point in time. So I think Mr. Lalit's issue is that he was going on a lot of misinformation. I would not be skeptical of what he is saying because I know I that this point that we are seeing police officers that know a lot more now, we've put a lot of information out on our website, tfatt.com. We always encourage persons to go there. We have issue papers there that explains what is custody, explains what is care and control, explains what is joint custody. These things are very important. People use these words interchangeably, thinking they are the same thing for the same scenario as well. In other words, people, many people don't understand that if you are a married couple, you cannot apply for joint custody because you're not married. What they allow you to do, you apply, one applies for custody, care and control, the other applies for access. But the parent, the unmarried person who applies for access also needs, or also needs to access their parental rights. Custody, in a sense, or joint custody, as in the watch people always asked for, is really both parties having that authority, that legal authority, to make influential decisions in the child's life, meaning school, meaning health, meaning religion, these kind of things. But you can have joint custody, which is given only to married men. Understand the differentiation. Only to married couples that are now separated, you will get joint custody. If you were never married, you apply, or even if you don't apply and you are given access by the court, the court ordered you access, you apply for custody and you order access, you always ask that you obtain your parental rights so that you allow the same permissions as if you were getting joint custody. I just hope it's not too confusing for people, but that parameter is just dealing with the influence on the decision-making of the child. The part when it comes to residence, meaning where the child resides, is care and control. And that is why we always ask, and that is why since the Joint Select Committee, we have, we have suggested that legislation be drawn up officially for shared parenting, because shared parenting does combines them. Shared parenting combines joint custody, which is the decision making, and joint care and control. So if you have shared parenting, you have both. So the child ha has dual residency, so to speak. One week by daddy, one week by mommy, or two weeks by mommy, two weeks by daddy. And also the parents have the power equally to make decisions in the child's life.
That is why we ask for shared parenting to share. Good morning. Parenting. Morning. Um, what is the procedure to for a father who feels that his child or children, whilst in the custody of the other parent, let, let me not put the father. Let me let me put it in in, in a neutral way. Non custodial. One, parent, one mm. parent has um, control and care for the child. And the other parent, through visitation, ha has information that their child may be in a dangerous situation, or uh, or another individual has been introduced into the home situation where their child is primarily staying. What is the procedure for that parent in terms of ensuring the safety of their child, if they feel that is the case, if they have evidence to to support that sort of claim? Because this is one of the conversations that has come up with the recent scenario and whether or not. A father, in, in the case of this scenario, has a legal right to challenge the custody based on information he may get that his child may be putting may be put at danger or not in the safest of environments. Of course he does. I mean, he could go before the court and he could have a variation of the current um, court order, access order, custody arrangement. If he has evidence, if he has the finance to do it, which is most times a challenge to obtain a, a, a lawyer's services to go back and go back the filing. If the person now is still in a mental state, you have to realize some men or oh, uh, traumatized after a five-year case to not get custody. They're considering for a number of years. Just yesterday, I was talking to a father as well who believes that his, his son is now being mentally abused by the mother. And he's considering if to go back and to encourage him to go back to spend that money, um, not knowing what the, if it will change the consequence. Uh, sometimes the real, the real issues that some of them face. Yes, I continue to encourage them to go back, but these are honestly some of the issues that they face. But to answer your question, yes, you can go back, but when you go back, sometimes it doesn't deal with dealt with immediately. Also, you have to wait for a hearing. If you have the money as well, you, and you, you can try to get. Indicate I feel my child is in danger. I feel another person has been introduced into the home scenario, which is the, the other parent's right. You understand? Right. It's your domicile. Mm -hmm. But I feel the information I have is that, for example, I, I know a particular scenario where a, a colleague of mine uh, does not have control and custody. Right. And an individual has been introduced into the scenario, a, a partner. And he's saying that the, 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 the child is telling, the child is 11 years old, that mm -hmm. the individual is smoking marijuana in the household. All right. Yeah, Does so, that... I mean, it's based on how strong the evidence is. And at uh, uh, that one of smoking marijuana, that's going to get put off for about uh, two, three, four months investigated. Even when the about... child is indicated to the police or the cause that the child may be in danger or in an unsafe environment? But that's the reality of it. You could go to the CPU. Um, and I would always advise there to go to the first, go, to, go there first, which is the, the child protection unit, the police arm. You go, you make the report there. They would say then they have to, they have to start the investigations and after then send a report to train authority, train authority would then have to make arrangements to come and visit the scenario. And then during that process as well, when that child told you that and you initiate this, the child must continue to live in that space. You know? So the other parent now runs a greater risk that because the child has now informed you what penalty or penance the child is now going to face while the child is there. I, I, you've seen me highlight these instances where, 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 where I've seen young girls allege, allege sexual penetration by the parent and, and, and they didn't want to place the, 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 the young lady in the possession of the father. She is now. I don't even want to go into the matter too much, but it, it was a task. So she was in close proximity to the person she made the allegation to for a, 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 a lengthy period of time. So long and short of the story, these things do happen. And, 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 and that is why I still often, you would hear me complaining, Paul, about the Child Protection Unit, about the Children Authority, and I'm complaining about the state as well, because I can understand that the Child Protection Unit <clears throat> And the children authority may have resource problems. So I will complain that the state should give them the resources they need. But you would see me sometimes talking about the child protection unit sometimes with 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 with, with bias sometimes, gender bias sometimes. So these these departments that are sometimes set up to protect 
do have cultural challenges, do have financial challenges that can be addressed with training and can be addressed with finance in the right places as well. So it's that it's as multifaceted as that. And I've been around and advocating time and time again. So to you, Paul, it might be, hey, let me make that report. And the child does. But anybody who knows is not going to be a fast and clear-cut scenario. And the other parent also is in consideration of when I do this and trigger the act, there's a problem. And then the children authority side in their defense, as a, as he passed um, Mr. Hannah Benjamin, when he was the CEO there, they have a real problem when they use resources to go and investigate. And it's a false allegation that has been levied against them. So the determination of false and truth is another thing that causes them to waste time and waste resources. And that part is on the state. So I've shown you individually where Nelly, where we are all in society taking up some level of responsibility to have to be blamed for. So it's it's very, very challenging. Oh, it's late doing. Come again? Mr. I came on a little late, so I don't know if it was asked, how is Mr. the lead doing? I, I can't imagine hmm. uh, either parent yeah. understanding what your four-year-old baby went through, uh, given oh. the autopsy report. And, I mean, the initial report is horrendous enough with the decapitation. And then the autopsy indicated she was missing an eye and she had lacerations yeah. and head contusions, which means that that child was beaten. Tortured. Mm -hmm. Tortured. And and then mood, mood. I, 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 it's just for a parent to have that in his or her mind is I don't know how is he doing? Yeah, I mean I mean it's traumatized. I could tell from the way he speaks. I mean he may not even realize he's traumatized by the things taking place. Um, I've spoken to him over the weekend. I spoke to him Saturday as well because so much is coming out into the media and a lot of questions he's had is being asked and answered in the public space and not even some of them not even answered but other suggestions being made is he's even asked me about that he's now considering to do opportunity test as well because he's now he, he doesn't know so he's, he's he's confused i would say i'm not saying that he is misguided or in a or going in a misdirected direction so to speak but as you said this is a traumatizing experience he's he's not of extreme grief correct and this yeah. is something that i've seen up on um, what I did is, is connect him with Mr. Selborne Rez, who had a similar scenario happen to him about 11 or 12 years ago. And I've asked Selborne, since he's been post his trauma, to continue to work and, and, and speak to him. I often ask Selborne to do that. Selborne Rez has been a trooper. I asked him to do the same thing when, with, with Kevin Gumabach when Kiana was found in that way. Because though he goes through his struggles as well, he's been there a lot longer than these new guys who are going through this trauma. And he's very instrumental when it comes to the rehabilitation process of getting your life back on track after losing your children in such a tragic way. And he lost two children, not one. Mm. And the, his wife, who wasn't even divorced him yet, the, her ex-lover killed her as well. So he even grieves for her as well. Hmm. Yeah, it's a it's it's a rough life. fortunate scenario. And... Yes, yeah, it is. And and you see what 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 startled me is that someone pasted pasted a picture of what he said and what Mr. Lalit said and combined it and shared it on social media. Both things saying the very same thing twelve years after. I believe if my children had been given to me or I had access, meaningful access or custody, they would still be alive. And in Mr. Selborn Rez's case, um, unlike Mr. Lalit's, who didn't really get to the court, Selborn's case got to the court. Selborn did everything he had. Selborn went to the social workers. Selborn had them come. Selborn went to the to the court. Selborn said that he had an issue with, with the, the children and he felt they weren't safe in that place. And the judge, he always recites exactly what that judge told him because it's stuck in his brain. The judge tells, tells him, look at you, because you're a little heavier set. Look at you. You don't look like you could take care of yourself. Should I remove these children from their mother's care and put them in yours? And it was shortly after mother and children were murdered. And and I do children like to have said. Rwanda, let me ask you this question. Eh? This is let me I kind of get it out of my head. Are there any women 
advocating on behalf of fathers the way that there are men advocating, advocating on behalf of mothers. I don't know of any, correct me if I'm wrong, but are there well, any I, women <laughs> publicly advocating on behalf of men as there well, are men advocating on behalf of women? I know there's a percentage of, I mean, as I say, we have a lot of support on the ground from women because, I mean, we, are, we have a lot of mothers and grandmothers, well, grandmothers more so, aunts, all these women who don't get to see their, their, their nieces, their nephews, their, their grandchildren, because they are affiliated with the paternal part of the family. So there's a great number of women that support us. But as you said, that public voice, um, there's only like one, and they're not really, really, really public, but they would help us with research and a number of things. I mean, Ms. Zakia Wadada, for sure, from the Emancipation Support Committee, has always been very vocal. She's one of the reasons we even was able to conduct that search to, to get the, um, it was through the Emancipation Support Committee receiving the funding on our behalf to, for us to, 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 to do that European Union project where that research was done. She just had seen me on television and got in contact with me. And, 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 and I mean, she was, she was kind of somebody who kind of guided me when it came to certain parts of running an organization of this sort. So for sure, if I was to mention one person who has vocally been there as much as she can, she, if I went on show, she came as well, definitely Ms. Zakia Wadada. I Not many that. at all, but, but I didn't mention need, it. Maybe you need to make that call because in, in my humble opinion, and I have no statistics to prove it, people listen more to women than, 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 than sometimes they listen to men. So maybe you need mm. to make a public call for more influential women to come on board and assist with this because we can't be talking about this every time a child is murdered, a child is slaughtered. And, sure. and, and in these circumstances, it, it just sickening. I, this thing sickens me, man. Correct. I mean, I have continuously made that call, eh? but for some reason, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very emotive topic. And I think many women believe that if they advocate Genuinely, on this perspective, it's like the pulling down women folk or pulling down the grandeur of single motherhood. So I would see many women say X, Y, Z, and many women agree, and many women who I know to be influential, who in certain spaces you that 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 you know are influential, but they wouldn't come forward. No matter how you ask them, I ask them publicly, I ask them privately. Many of them don't. Many of them also know that they're due to their some of their affiliations. They can't. And they, they, they've mentioned that to me. So, I mean, it, the, the, the thing is, guys, it should not matter more. And, and we have men supposed to have that constitutional right as well. Man, woman, see, we're supposed to have the same right. And, 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 and if we are now in a position where we need to have a woman say something for men, for people to care, then, I mean, then we're in a, in a, in a, in a horrendous problem. So I think it is, as, as I say, it's all about culture, you know, it's all about the culture changing and it must happen here. Look at the parliament, there's a lot of men there. Look at boards in, 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 in so many boards across the, the country, there are men present. And, and things like paternity leave, that's something that I am, as public knowledge that I am on the telecommunication board, that's something that I had to make sure to fight that the employees there could get. Because it benefits not only men, most of the things we asked for, if not everything, doesn't only benefit men, it benefits us like it benefits women as well, like paternity leave. You have men paying national insurance, the same increments that women pay. And why don't they get to access paternity leave in a meaningful way? Two to three days is the standard. But why? Mm -hmm. They're making the same contributions. Even their wives, some who are unemployed, benefit from the contributions they make. Yet they themselves cannot benefit from it. They get two to three days only. And then we come, and this is what I see, as I said, hypocritical. When I hear statements, as I have heard thus far already, from President, Prime Minister, other persons, about men stepping up. When you, within the state, who is in control of a lot of these things, that could show and assist and support the step up of men, and doing nothing. And you've heard me advocate for years, I've written you letters for years, and you've chosen to do nothing but come on a podium and tell men to step up when Wait. you yourself have done nothing to support that step. And, and, and that's the point I'm, I'm making. 
we blaze away rightfully so at men all the time when they are wrong we do it all the time but nobody says anything on the opposite end nobody says anything to women hey all you need to step up all you need to stop being this way stop being that way stop victimizing children stop you know nobody's so, saying I, it i know and let me tell you why because there was a public statement that was made by a public figure about the choice that some women need to make and you would realize even the international media had to call me about that the stream and because it became a caribbean campaign of 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 of, of male hate because that statement was made but when you really think or look at it that is an advice for all persons where we, we've been told by our parents to choose your friends wisely as well and song the advice and even more so for a single parent i tell single fathers that as well you are that you, when you are now seeking a relationship as a single parent you have to have a higher level a responsibility held at a higher level of, of accountability because you are bringing a person into your life as a lover and that person into the life of your children as a parent two roles are going to be brought in to do you must be more cautious you must choose wisely because from what we are seeing some of the choices being being made the children are paying the consequence for your choice yeah. and that is unfair so it, it is it is crazy for me to think that there must not be any level of accountability when a child has done nothing more than be a part of a family trusted the decision of their parents and lost their life and have a right to safety really run away all the time uh we had yeah. booked mr lazito also but clearly He's going through some trouble, so we have to understand. Yeah, I've, I've been trying, trying, I'm trying to, to reach him here. Thank you for being with us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rondal, and keep up the good work, my brother. Yeah, keep up the good Thank work. you.